Hello, folks. I'm the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. And I'm here for one reason and one reason only. Even though I'm not wearing my wrestling shirt, I'm wearing my Army of Darkness shirt. I'm here in case anyone tries to plunder my house for all the coronavirus supplies that I've been hoarding. <laughs> uh, that I can sell on Amazon at ridiculous 20 times the rate. Um, well, now, on a serious note, I've been put on furlough. So I have nothing to do for a while. The good thing is that's like a week vacation. I'm going to stretch out ugh, the old pitching arm a little bit, get it kind of warmed up, get some exercise outside. And I can't have some out more outside time than she's used to having. I just have to watch my wait because the gym's closed, everything's closed, work's closed. As long as the banks are open tomorrow, I'm happy. And Walmart, oh, Walmart closes the world of riots. But it's time to distract ourselves a little bit and get into the realm of professional wrestling. And we start this, as always, with shout-outs to you, the YouTube audience, or sometimes Discord audience, Jazzy029. Thank you very much. You just earned yourself a six count. And we have AEW today. I do apologize for this being late. I had to wake up early, so I couldn't get the video done when I planned. Hopefully this gets up pretty soon. And I'll give a little bit of a very tentative schedule following the video. Uh, so we have a Death Triangle promo, uh, Bastard Pox there. Uh, and then Cody comes in the ring. Cody gives a promo. He talks about how during this time of uncertainty that... They're here still to entertain and provide and provide a distraction, kind of what Triple H did. So again, very heartfelt. Cody's still good at this stuff. Um, you have an MJF, a quick little MJF promo to begin with. 
And then the show begins proper for AEW. Uh, starts off with the Lucha Brothers of Pentagon Jr. and Ray Phoenix taking on the best friends. Oh, actually, uh, I'll, I'll tell a funny story during this match, too. It was weird. Uh, MJF and Sean Spears are on the side. They're they're betting money, man. I like the fact that the heels are on one side, faces are on another. There's some noise. There's some kind of reaction. Every so often, the, the camera would go to MJF and Sean Spears' interaction. Does This did not take away from the match. This was actually a, a pretty good match. There were like s s some weird things though that happened in this. Um, so let's get to the match. It's the Lucha Brothers and Best Friends. Uh, Trent and Phoenix start off. Uh, they double team on Phoenix for a little bit. And you see Orange Cassidy. He's like ringside. I can't even mimic it because I because my sunglasses are in the truck. But he looks asleep. Uh, Jr. is terrible, by the way. Uh, Jr. Oh yeah, that's right. Jazzy OT9. I have to research this, but I think every show Jr. has mentioned his barbecue sauce, or at least he talks about beans, because it seems every time Jr. opens his mouth, the Discord is saying, "Oh, how about them beans?" Oh, Lucha Brothers, they're Mexican jumping beans. Best friends are black-eyed peas, or, or two peas in a pod. Which, I don't know if that's a bean or not. I don't know, I'll leave that up for further discussion. But, but JR, he, he like plugs his barbecue sauce. All the time. And, oh, I know why he did this. Yeah, so, so again, it's a pretty good match. Again, let's see. Those Pentagon Juniors are amazing. Those thrust kicks, the double team thrust kicks by both uh, Pentagon and Ray Phoenix. And then they did the, the Lucha Brothers, they did the Wheelbro Splash, which is awesome. Uh, the Lucha Brothers are so good. Eventually, the Trent did some weird botchy dive. There are a lot of botchy dives. It's like when you take away the crowd. Like, you see, you might actually see the barricade and realize, whoa, maybe this isn't such a great idea. Because remember, they're used to a couple thousand screaming fans. They look up, for the most part, they see fans. When they looked up, they, they saw nothing, and then they saw a barricade, and then they're like, whoa, better stop this. So that was some weird botchy dive. I don't know if his foot caught the ropes or, or, or if he realized it's like, that's a metal barricade. Again, for the most part, the survival instinct kicks in, most people, and say, I better not do this. Something in the brain, a very rudimentary part of the brain, is me running into metal thing is only bad for me. So, I don't know if it was that. Uh, then they were resting outside the ring. Again, the faces were cheering them on. The heels would, would also, again, money was... Like, like, trying to change hands every time they did something it seemed that uh spears and mjf were like right like upping the bet they were drinking wine again taste the class of the heels i like that not the bubble because only one person drinks bubble baby that's that's le champion but they can have a nice glass of wine it was funny because sean spears when he held that wine glass in his hand he, he looked like some like villain a Bond villain from when movies were good. Uh, then again, uh, Chuck eventually did get the hot tag. Because Trent was in a lot. Uh, then they did a lot of... Uh, let's see here. Oh, they tried to go do the hug. But instead they're like, no, 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 no. Elbow. And actually it was funny because... I think I just went through my normal kind of greeting spiel at work, and the woman said, "Oh, I can't give you a hug, but here." Like she like gave me the elbow. I guess that's good. It's not really professional to hug me, but and I guess people don't give the boom fist bump grenade. So I guess the elbow is an appropriate means of greeting. 
we'll we'll see how long that lasts. I have no idea. So there was that and said they touched elbows, which is kind of funny. Um, the referee distracted Pentagon low blowed one of them. It was stomp that led to the stump package the stomp package pile driver. Lucha Brothers win by dastardly means. Again, it was it's kind of weird. And also, when they were outside, like Orange Cassidy did did a trust fall. Shouldn't the best friends and either the trust fall onto the Lucha Brothers? Shouldn't that be a disqualification? Shouldn't we have a death definitive? But for some reason, that's but for some reason there was no death definitive. The ref said, you want to fight on the outside? There's only a few of you with no crowd going in involved. You fight outside and it involves whoever you want. We ain't going to have no dust to finish tonight, baby. But, again, it was weird. Like, there should have been, like, a DQ, though. So, I'm like, there was the, the botch dive where I think he realized there's the seal barricade. And then the, the whole thing with, o with uh, Orange Cassidy doing the trust fall. A no DQ? No, you mean you can just have like random outside interference anymore? I think the one thing I will agree with JR upon, the rules for tag team matches are really lax. And I don't even think they would allow this stuff in AAA or, or CMLL, which is tough, but who knows. So, um, but the Lucha Brothers win. The cheeseburger match. Then Tony interviews the best friends in Orange Cassidy, and they're upset that they lost because of low blow. It's like, are you okay? Do you think I'm okay? <laughs> in the nuts. Real reaction. I'll give them credit for that. And they challenge the Lucha Brothers to a street fight, but this time it's not just a street fight in a wrestling ring. It's a street fight in a parking lot, which is pretty close, because having a street fight in the street, you have cars involved. That's potentially not good. Even in a parking lot, you potentially have cars. At least it feels like a street, though. Wow. Having a street fight on a paved surface instead of a wrestling ring. What a novel idea. I like that idea. That's a good idea. It's a very good idea. So that was a fun match to watch. And then, I'll tell you what. This next match was okay. They're getting a little bit better. A little bit. They have some work to do, mainly because because Riho, I think, brings the division down. Only because, again, even though Jerry gets ripped for saying she's 98 pounds, if she's 99 pounds, really, what's the big difference? I think one of my legs was pounds. Well, I hope not, but... Yeah, like 50 pounds is like one of my legs. So that means my leg, my one leg, weighs half as much as an entire human being. That's not good. So with this, it was Penelope Ford, <laughs> Rio versus, versus, I'm sorry, Penelope Ford versus Rio versus Chris Tantlander versus Hikaru Shida. Oh, wow. Uh, this was interesting. Uh, Ford, for the most part, just goes flying. She goes right after Rio. Chris, Stat Chris Statlander and, and, and uh, the Kairi Shida just kind of stare. They're like, do you want to get involved? Do you, do you want to fight them? No. Do you want to get involved? No. Do you just want to watch them fight? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. It's like the one scene in Slapshot where, where the uh, Hanson mother start fighting and everyone else on the bench. Do you want to get involved with this? Nah. And so, yeah, so uh, Ford went right after Riho because, again, like I said, I imagine Dark. Uh, Kip, Sa uh, Kip Sabian, he just he's just there to get beat up because he tries to get involved. He saves Penelope Ford. However, he gets beat up by both Chris Statlander and Sheeta. And then Rico flies on everyone. So she takes out everyone on the outside. Chris Statlander counters Riho into. A backbreaker, which is great. And then Chris Atlander again suplexed 
the Karushita into Riho. That's a good way to use Riho. At least show her that, yeah, she's the smallest person there. Uh, Shida tries to double suplex both Penelope Ford and Riho. No, that wasn't happening. Penelope Ford and Riho kind of like teamed up a little bit and suplex Hikaru Shida. Again, one on two. The odds are not good. Two on one. That's different. And then the uh, Penelope Ford and Riho went back and forth. The yay boos. Uh, Ford did a flippy black el elbow thing. That was pretty cool. And I'll tell you what, throughout the match, you pervy cameraman, I think, I actually think we saw Penelope Ford's outer labia. Because, yeah, so, something got, got pinched too closely in between her legs and, and something just showed up. But yeah, Penelope Ford has to work on her legs. Because, again, the camera work could have could have helped her out a lot. Her outfit doesn't help because it's, it's really thin there. If it just pinches a little bit more. Yeah, you get you get what I'm seeing. And it, I think for one part of the match, I used to like, focus square on Chris Tandler's booty. Such pretty cameraman. I thought I was bad. At least when they come into work, like... Oh, yeah, because at, at work, one... The mannequin, the mannequin wouldn't leave her clothes on at the store across. That was funny. Because all of a sudden you're like, wait a second. That mannequin, one, one was exposed. And I'm sure some Walmart mark, I want to speak to your manager. Why do you have your mannequin exposed so my child can see? That's an inappropriate. Oh, whatever, lady. That's just funny. And then, oh yeah, one woman came in the store wearing like a elongated open-sided tank top, and she wasn't wearing a bra. Another woman came in with six bumps on her chest. There should only be two, one on each side, but this was like three though. It's like, whoa. Yeah, she wasn't wearing something either. Gotta like the people at Daytona Beach. Uh, so then Chris Statlander, again, did something on to, like, and I missed all of it. She does some, like, electric chair, weird position. Uh, she'd eventually hit Rio, I think, with a shank, with a knee drop. And I'll tell you what, when Sheeta did that Michinoku driver. Whoa! She just grabbed Penelope Ford right down there. I think something slipped in. Yeah. There's only one place something can slip in in a woman. Down there. Well, there's technically two places. But this was kind of more towards the front. Yeah, she grabbed just she just she just grabbed her. Like that that was that, that wasn't even a grope. That that wasn't an accidental touch. That was a full on grab. So they are getting better though. Hikaru Shida wins, as she should. Like the only two the only well Penelope Ford, if she won this, I wouldn't be upset with. Chris Tatlander only because she lost Nyla Rose. If she wanted to reassert her dominance, that's fine. Anyone could have won except for Riho. Riho's just I don't know, just Riho. Wait a second, let's see her. I keep on adjusting this chair. Ah, oh, there we go. Maybe that's better. Ah, oh, there we go. I was a little too low in the frame. I wasn't centered properly, as they say in film school, I guess. I don't know. I've never been to film school. But that's okay. And again, some of those cameramans, they went to the naughty film school. So with this, Akaru Shida wins. It was a good match. It was. They're improving. It just depends what they do and who they do it with. This match was a ham sandwich. And Colt Cabana is watching. Colt Cabana, he is the wrestler turned wrestling fan. Oh, I'll do it. And I'll tell you what he was doing in the interview. And he was saying, like Chris, like Kip Sabian was, was talking smack to him. <laughs> Colt Cabana, shut up, kid. Don't you know I'm a pro wrestler? 
Whoa! He just open and slapped the slapped the taste out of his mouth. That was awesome. Colt Cabana. Still the best. He he should have won every battle royal. And then Tony again uh, interviews Colt Cabana. He he then we go to a clip of him interviewing John Moxley, who's not medically clear to wrestle yet. And then our next match it was the Butcher and Blade. No bunny. I wonder what happened to the bunny. Did the bunny get coronavirus? That's not good. Taking on Jurassic Express. Maybe Allie gave the coronavirus to Marco Stunt. Because Marco Stunt wasn't there either. I shouldn't be joking about that, but it's so hard not to. Uh, so Jungle Boy starts off. A lot of chain wrestling. He is an amazing chain wrestler. Even JR, Jim Cornette. Everyone agrees. Jungle Boy is amazing. Luchasaurus, he's a big hoss. He's a big guy, big tough guy. Yeah, he does what he's supposed to do. He he comes in again. It's a kind of funny gimmick. I do like it, though. But Jungle Boy is definitely a very accomplished wrestler because, again, the chain wrestling, the moves he puts together, the way he runs off the ropes from one move to another, so smooth. Uh, then they double, then, of course, they double team on the blade. The blade, again, is there. He's a smaller of the two heels. He gets beat up. The Butcher and the Blade do send Jungle Boy into the barricade because I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the table. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Yeah, because normally a table gets it, but this time the barricade was getting it. Then there was the, the weird drop. Again, that it, it's like without the crowd there, the wrestlers actually see the barricade. Something clicks in their head and saying, no, this is bad idea. It's like, it's like, well, should I do that? Should I do that? Like, you're halfway to doing something. Like, no, this is dumb. And then you don't do it. That's kind of what their bodies were doing. Again, it's the body's natural response not to throw itself into hard metal objects. Uh, and again, oh, when they did the chops. Oh, my God. I did not realize in an empty arena they would echo so much. Oh, ooh, that hurt me. They're so good. Uh, Luciosaurus eventually does the kicks on the moonsault. Uh, they, they do try the butcher and blade again. The, oh, the butcher is amazing looking. He has that old, old timey English bar fight, ment like pub brawl mentality. Oi, you called me mama whore. I want to beat your face in your pee, cunt. I could see him saying that, though. He just looks like that, that English brawler. Like, he goes out for a pint, and he's not happy until he, like, knocks someone's teeth out. So, again, uh, they the Butcher and Blade, again, remember, they were hired by MJF because they do try their double team because MJF's shouting them, hey, 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 do your double team thing. Yeah, yeah, do your double team move. Finish him off. They're like, what are you doing telling me how to fight? Of course, that was enough of a distraction. You hit the uh, Jura Jurassic whatever by Jurassic Express. Jurassic Express pick up a victory. Again, in a good cheeseburger match. This is a Dark Order promo. And, of course, they give the promo, the exalted one is here. And I'm like, oh, Matt Hardy. Delete. Delete. Del Wait a second. Uh, Christopher, Dan uh, Christopher Daniels and then Frankie Kazarian say, no, 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 you're full of it. And then the exalted one does show up. It's Brody Lee, also known as Luke Harper. He looks great in his gear. He's talking. He's meaningful. He has the powers of darkness. He starts off at the ramp, lights go off, magically teleports his way behind uh, Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian as they're in the ring, beats them up. The Dark Order is complete. They're, they're, they're ready for trios gold. They need a trios championship. Uh, then we have Jake the Snake, Robert, and uh, Lance Archer. And this is great because <laughs> Lance Archer, instead of talking for his promo, they show him in a backyard mud show wrestling ring. 
and he's just like, oh, you see some guy, oh, well, I'll oh, hell gonna beat you up, boy. Our Lance Archer just like destroys people. He goes through like twenty guys in like one bout. Again, backyard mud show wrestling. And that was really fun. And again, like all throughout the night, MJF is just throwing out betting Sean Spears, like everything. It was fun. Then we have the inner circle, which was uh, Pride and Powerful, Hernandez, Ortiz, Theon, Cody Rose, Matt Jackson, Matt Jackson, and Hangman Adam Page. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> he was still making fun of, MJF was still making, they were still ripping on that neck tattoo. That's a terrible tattoo. I don't care if you are a pro wrestler. It just looks terrible. Uh, let's see here. So the inner circle was Sammy. Yeah, no, yeah, wait. Was, no, it was, um, wasn't Hernandez and Ortiz. No, yeah, it was Hernandez Ortiz and J.K. Or I'm sorry. Uh, what's his face? Sammy Guevara was outside. He, he kind of walked them down. He started to do his, like, sign things, whatever. Uh, Cody, I, he, he's either so programmed or he just made fun of it. He, he took his shirt off. He was going to toss it to the crowd. Right, no one's there, so he just tosses his shirt to Brandy. Brandy. Oh, she has to wear belly shirts and Daisy Dukes all the time. I don't care what they say. Brandy. Magnifique. So he did the shirt toss to Brandy. Uh, Cody then eventually gets beat up a lot. He gets the the double team. Again, it was a toss duplex that he did. Uh, then he tagged into Matt, Matt Jackson. He had a double team classic. Oh, double axe handle to the arm. And then they tagged again, did the same thing. Oh, double axe handle to the arm. That's so fun to see. Um, and there was the triple team by Ortiz because he just poked him in the eye. Hager did the Vader bomb. This was great tag team work, though. And then, then they even mentioned this is hey this is kayfabe. Like, whenever they mention that's funny. Then uh, Inner Circle did the vertical delayed suplex and the trade off to all three members. Then like a modified moolah lock that was good. Uh, Jericho again is is on microphone. Oh he's so he's so awesome. He has like a young buck buck attached to his head. Jericho is great. The interactions between Jericho and Taz and Excalibur were amazing. You could have done really without JR for, for a lot of the show. Can Sammy and MJF, they're like, they're, they're, they, they also came out singing the chorus to, to a Judas. Judas in my mind. I don't even know the rest of it. But that was, again, that was just, they were just having fun. And you could tell because they were watching the match. They were enjoying it like fans. So you still had that, that, that fan vibe there without there being fans. Uh, and then, of course, they always shout, it's time to dive. So everyone does their dives. Wardlow eventually gets his hands on Cody. Wait, again, shouldn't that be a you finish? I don't know. Uh, what else? There was uh, uh, tr the locomotion Northern like suplex. Uh, something else. Oh yeah, like the, the page. Oh yeah, then Hangman and Page comes in. He's he's awesome. He starts flying. He does again the sliding lariat, uh, moon salt over the top rope. And then it was a roll up win. Whoa, did not see that happening by the inner circle. The inner circle one. Uh, they cut a promo and then all of a sudden, from above, we have the drone. There's only one drone. I know of, and that is the Drone of Vanguard 1. And then all of a sudden, up in the crowd, Cody comes out. No, we don't have Nick Jackson, but we have this. But Matt Jackson says, we have this guy. And then, delete! 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 Yes! Massive deletion came in and... Broken Matt Hardy returns to AEW. Broken Matt Hardy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. And this match, overall, especially because 
the broken one, the deleter of space and time itself showed up. This was a surf and turf match. And that was AEW. I'll tell you what. AEW did the empty arena show the best because at least they had the wrestlers there. They were the fans. I mean, they were spaced apart according to God knows what government regulations. Because I live in Florida. I'm Florida, man. We don't follow government regulations. If I want to go to a bar, I'm going to a bar. If I want to go to the beach, I'm going to the beach. It's like the good people in Clearwater, Florida did. So again, this was a fun show. They, they did it right. So we'll see what happens on SmackDown on Friday because that'll be my next show. Um, I have no idea if I'm going to be doing Rea de Reyes that Saturday. If it's on, I'll do a review of it. I can't live stream yet. I still have another week left. Or actually just two. Oh, wow. Two more weeks and I'm done. Uh, that's it for the week then. And again, Monday. So actually next week is going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. And we'll see what happens then. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching again. Please take care of yourselves, folks, even though I do make fun of the coronavirus. Um, do keep yourself healthy, I guess. Just don't just don't let it take over your life and change the major things you want to do. If you want to go out, have fun, do so in a safe manner. I'm gonna go fishing, I'm gonna go have fun in my backyard. I might go to my parents' condo and use their gym too. Again, all these warnings, don't do this, don't go here, don't go there. Yeah. Other than that, have a good night. And again, remember, if you come over to my house looking for my supplies, just like Bruce Campbell shoot first, then what does it say? Then think never. Yep, shoot first, think never. Again, shop smart, shop S.